Okay, for lesson four practice problems, we got to select all the statements that must be true, that must be true for any scaled copy Q of polygon P. Now again, uh, like previous practice problems, uh, we don't have a Q. There's no picture of it. So we just have to use our imaginations that it does exist and that it is a scaled copy. So what do we know? Now, I mean, I, I could easily just draw it, but I, I'm not going to draw it. I just... Let's just kind of go on uh, the information we have here. So for A, it says the side lengths are all whole numbers. Well, maybe I'm not sure, but if you look at the if you look at the original shape right here, um, there is no numbers at least ever given for any of the side lengths. There's there's no side length here. There's nothing here. There's nothing there. So um, we would be strictly guessing that that is true. So not enough info. Uh, for B, the angle measurements are all whole numbers. Whole numbers means it's not a decimal, not a fraction. Uh, so um, all the angles, now all the angles, if you're doing a scale, the angles do not change. The angles, whether you're scaling up or scaling down, um, they are always going to say the same. And so it looks like every one of these angles is a whole number. 35 is a whole number. That's a whole number, 125. That's 250. That's 80. That's 135. And then um, there's no number here, but this is a sign for 90 degrees, 90, which is a whole number. So that is true right there. Uh, Q, you know, that mystery shape that we're, we don't even see, but you have to imagine but Q has exactly what one right angle. Well, this shape has one right angle, so we can say that Q has one right angle because the scale copy of it is going to have the exact same um, corresponding angles, everything. All right, so if the scale factor between P and Q is one-fifth, one to five, then each side of P is multiplied by one-fifth to get a corresponding side. Yeah, that's how scale factor works. So that is true. For E, if the scale factor is 2, each angle in P is multiplied by 2. That is definitely false. Because we know that angles will not change. Angles are not going to double. Just because you make, I mean, just think of a square. A square has all right angles. And if you double the side lengths of a square, is it now all 180 degree angles? That doesn't make sense. It, you know, a square has to have right angles. So, and squares can be all sizes. They can be really, really tiny, like a postage stamp, or they can be really big, you know, but uh, the angles are not going to scale. Side lengths do, though. Uh, if Q has two acute angles, I'm sorry, not if, but Q has two acute angles and three obtuse. Well, it looks like um, right here, this is, that's obtuse, because that's greater than 90. Um, that's obtuse, that's a reflex angle. And that's obtuse, because that's over one. That's over 90. And right here, this is, that's acute. And that's acute. Now, that's, that's neither acute nor obtuse. It's just right. It's a right angle. So yeah, this one is true. All right, for number two, it says here's quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Quadrilateral P, Q, R, S is a scaled copy of quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Point P corresponds to A. Uh, Q to B, R to C, and S to D. And it makes more sense. But if you look at the way that those letters are ordered, you know, you got, you got P, Q, R, S. You know, and the way that a polygon or a triangle or any shape is described, um, and it, if it's uh, definitely if it's describing a scaled copy of it, then the letters are also going to correspond. So you got you got A corresponds with P, you know, Q corresponds with B, R with C, and D with S. S with D. All right. Um, so it says right here, um, if the distance from P to R is three units, what is the distance from Q to S? 
All right, so P to R. Now P to R, um, that basically is saying from A to C, from A to C. So we look at the distance right there. The distance from A to C is three. What is the distance from uh, Q to S? All right. So that's three units. Now, what is going on here? Now, this I'm going to count this. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. So, looks like um, that there was um, there was a, a scale factor of one half because it went it went down, you know, it went from a six to a three, which is one half. All right, so if we want to know what the distance is from Q to S, Q to S, here's Q, and here's S. Now, Q, that's B to D. That's going to be right there. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's also 6. All right, and so that is going to be 3. Number two, it says figure two is a scaled copy of figure one. For part A, identify the points in the figure that correspond to the points in A and C. Um, to the points A and C in figure one. Label them P and R. Okay, so A and C, this corresponds with A. So I'm going to label that as P. That's for some reason erased. I'm try that. That's P. And we'll call that R. Okay. Uh, identify the points in the figure one. Oh wait, I didn't answer that question. Uh, what is the distance from P and R? All right. So the distance from here to here is one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm counting the number of squares, you know, between um, points P and point R. So that's six. Identify the points in figure one that correspond to Q and S in figure two. Label them as B and D. All right, so Q from here. So I'm gonna, that's going to be, um, we're going to call this B. We're going to call this D right there. And what is the distance this time? The distance from there to there, that's three units. That's three units. Straight line distance is three. All right. If we're following the the path of that polygon, that might be a little bit different, but I don't think that's what it's asking. All right. So the question here is, what is the scale factor that takes figure one to figure two? So all you have to do to figure out scale factor is just take the scaled value and then put it over the original value. Right, so we have a right here. This was a two, and that was a six. All right, so I'm going to take the scale value was six, and this was two. So that looks like it's three. All right, so it's three times greater, and so that should be true right here as well. This is three, so and I didn't even count this right here, but I'm betting that that's nine. There's three. There's another three. Yeah, that's nine. From there to there. All right, G and H are two points in figure one, uh, but they're not shown. Uh, the distance between G and H is one. What is the distance between the corresponding points on figure two? Well, since the scale factor is three, you just have to multiply by three. So since it's one, we're just going to do one times three. Get your calculators out for that math. That is three. All right, for number four, to make one <coughs> to make one batch of lavender paint. <coughs> excuse me, to make one batch of lavender paint, the ratio of cups of pink paint to cups of blue is six to five. Find two more ratios of cups of pink to cups of blue paint that are equivalent to this ratio. 
All right, so six to five. You can write like in fraction form. Now remember, you can write ratios like this as well, right like that. And uh, six to five, now let's just say I double it. So if we double it, we're gonna end up with 12 to 10. Six times two and five times two. All right, if we triple it, we're gonna get 18 to 15. You know, if we, I know I don't have to keep going, but if I quadruple it times four, you're gonna end up with 24 to 20. All right, and you didn't necessarily have to go bigger. I mean, we could have multiplied by one half. And if we multiplied by one half, we end up like three, six times one half is three. And five times one half is two and a half.